Hey everyone, my name is Ben and I'm going to be narrating this lecture on different tillage implements used in Ontario. For starters, why do we perform tillage in the first place? Well, depending on the specific implement, tillage helps to level and dry the soil, control weeds, and incorporate residues, fertilizer, pesticide, and manure, all of which helps to prepare the seedbed to facilitate optimal planting. There are two main types of tillage that classify different implements. These are called primary tillage and secondary tillage. Primary tillage implements assist with the initial soil loosening, which decreases the soil's firmness or strength and can incorporate residue, fertilizer, pesticide, and manure into the soil. In general, primary tillage implements operate at greater soil depths and produces a coarser soil surface in comparison to secondary tillage. Secondary tillage implements administer further soil pulverization, incorporation of surface materials, and weed control. Secondary tillage additionally assists to level and pack the soil, mitigate the presence of air pockets, and subsequently provides the formation of an optimal seed bed prior to planting. For the remainder of the lecture, I will be going over some broad information related to the design and applications of a few different tillage implements used in Ontario, such as the moldboard plow, field cultivator, chisel plow, subsoiler, and disc harrow. The moldboard plow is a primary tillage implement that consists of a sturdy frame attached with curved plates and the possible addition of coulter blades or discs. This implement is typically used to break up and partially invert soil from around 10 to 20 centimeters. This action of inverting the soil results in almost complete burial of surface residue. Primary loosening of the soil also helps to enhance the efficiency and success of secondary tillage implements. However, use of the moldboard plow may elicit certain disadvantages. The inverting action of the moldboard plow causes a significant lack of residue on the soil surface in comparison to other tillage implements. This can increase the risk of erosion, particularly in the spring if the moldboard plow was used in the fall, as the lack of surface residue leaves the soil more prone to displacement during the time where soils are typically wet in Ontario. Excessive use of the moldboard plow can also diminish soil structure, which reduces water infiltration, aeration, and crop root growth. Additionally, with little surface residue, Rain droplets are able to freely fall on the soil surface, causing a greater degree of soil aggregate fragmentation and may potentially lead to soil crusting, which can further reduce water infiltration. The moldboard plow also requires a significant amount of energy to work such a large volume of soil, and therefore higher fuel costs are generally associated with this implement. Here's a short clip of the moldboard plow in use. Next we have the field cultivator, which is typically used as a secondary tillage implement that consists of a frame equipped with staggered sea shanks. Some field cultivators may use S-tines, but sea shanks are more common in Ontario. The shanks themselves may be narrow or have sweeps or shovels attached on the ends. Narrow shanks provide a greater degree of soil fracturing, while the addition of sweeps allows for a greater degree of soil mixing and surface material incorporation. Additionally, a greater sweep angle generally allows for a larger volume of soil to be disturbed. Application of a field cultivator typically occurs in the spring to assist with breaking apart larger clumps of soil left over from primary tillage and can control weeds and incorporate residues and fertilizers prior to planting. However, a field cultivator may potentially be used as a form of primary tillage that is less aggressive than other implements. The degree of residue incorporation can vary depending on the type of shank equipped as well as the type of crop residue. Additionally, spring tillage using a field cultivator requires less time, fuel, and labor than other forms of tillage such as the moldboard and chisel plow. Field cultivators may also be equipped with other implements such as spring teeth, spike drags, and basket rollers, all of which improve the uniformity of the seed bed by agitating and leveling the soil surface. Here's a short clip of a field cultivator in use. The chisel plow is similar in design to the field cultivator, but is typically equipped with a decreased number of thicker and wider sea shanks. This implement may also be used for either primary or secondary tillage. The more durable frame and shanks allow for deeper soil penetration, however this can also increase energy slash fuel costs. 
Subsequently, chisel plows are typically not very wide due to the need for an increased amount of force to pull it. The shanks themselves may be equipped with various shank points and sweeps that alter the degree of soil mixing and residue incorporation. Typically, spike points allow for the least amount of residue burial, while twisted shank points increase the degree of residue incorporation. Chisel plows are typically operated between 10 to 20 centimeters and assist with soil fracturing, but can also be set at lower depths to break apart the hard pan and alleviate compaction, which can improve water infiltration at greater soil depths. Chisel plows may also have a set of coulters or discs in front of the shanks to reduce residue size and decrease instances of plugging. The main benefit of using a chisel plow is that it can provide the least amount of soil mixing and residue incorporation in comparison to other forms of primary tillage and in certain configurations may allow for up to 80% of residue to remain on the surface. Due to the potential for conserving surface residue, the chisel plow may be a good option for fall tillage as the presence of large amounts of surface residue may reduce the risk of erosion in the spring. Here's a short clip of a chisel plow in use. The subsoiler is a primary tillage implement with shanks arranged either inline or spaced along a V-shaped frame. Shanks on a subsoiler are much stronger and wider compared to shanks on a chisel plow. There are also many different shank shapes or designs such as straight, parabolic, and swept. Straight shanks reduce the amount of soil lifting but require an increased amount of force to pull them. Parabolic shanks do not require as much force as the other shank designs but may increase the amount of soil lifting and mixing in rough conditions. Swept shanks may move surface residue slash soil downwards, which can reduce instances of plugging. The addition of sweeps or wing tips slightly increases the amount of force required to pull the subsoil, but also increases the volume of soil disturbed per shank, which can allow for reduction in the number of shanks equipped while still maintaining a desired level of soil disturbance. Subsoilers typically operate at depths below 10 to 20 centimeters to break slash loosen the hard pan formed through compaction. Alleviating compaction within the hard pan and subsurface layers can help to improve water infiltration and soil aeration, which subsequently may also improve crop root performance. Additionally, maintaining adequate water infiltration may also reduce the amount of potential surface runoff and in turn can reduce the risk of erosion. The stronger design of shanks allows them to withstand the excessive force of tilling at significant depth, which makes them better suited for such applications in comparison to a chisel plow. Here's a short clip of a subsoiler in use. Disc harrows are a primary or secondary tillage implement that is typically seen as either a tandem or offset disc harrow. The tandem disc harrow consists of four gangs or sets of concave discs typically arranged in X or bow tie fashion. The offset disc harrow only consists of two gangs or sets of concave discs and is essentially one half of a tandem disc harrow. The angle of the gangs or sets of discs can be altered to be either more or less parallel to each other. Additionally, the concave discs within the frontmost gang face an opposite direction to that of the discs in the back gang. This helps to further facilitate soil mixing as the soil is being thrown by the discs in two different directions. Disc edges are usually either smooth or notched. The notched discs are better able to cut through residue in firm soil, while the smooth discs are better suited for previously worked soil. Disc harrows can operate at varied soil depths and assist with lifting and mixing the soil as well as reducing aggregate size. The degree of soil loosening slash mixing is affected by the disc's concavity, spacing, and horizontal angle. Increasing disc concavity increases the width of soil that the disc is capable of mixing slash lifting. Reducing the space between each individual disc will also increase the degree of mixing and create a more fine textured soil. 
Increasing the horizontal angle of the gangs of discs will also increase the degree of loosening and mixing as more soil will make contact with the discs and be displaced. The discs are also capable of cutting residue into smaller pieces which increases the rate of decomposition and helps to facilitate proper planting. Additional implements such as spike drags and rolling baskets may be attached to further assist with seedbed preparation. Disc harrows may provide problems if residue is cut into too small of pieces and not sufficiently incorporated into the soil. This can increase the chances that small pieces of residue may be easily removed from the field through actions of wind or water. Such potential to reduce the amount of surface residue may lead to an increased risk of erosion. Here's a short clip of a tandem disc harrow in use. In conclusion, many different tillage implements and accessories exist that are capable of producing a desired degree of soil disturbance and residue management to provide an optimal seedbed prior to planting. Additionally, each implement can be modified, calibrated, and configured to meet different management needs depending on the given cropping system.